increase the number of men and minority teachers in the schools. Now this. Hey, have you heard the scoop? It's the Sunday sale at Baskin Robbins. Get an ice cream or yogurt sundae for just $1.49. So what are you waiting for? Scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening becoming more numerous after midnight. Rain activity continuing tomorrow and Wednesday. Now to CBS. The president goes to Europe. Will the trip produce results or more headaches for his re-election campaign? On the health front, a new diet getting rave reviews for taking pounds off and keeping them off. And Eye on America. Tonight, a brand of baseball that's exploding, crashing, and dazzling. This summer at a stadium near you. This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, I'm Connie Chung, sitting in tonight for Dan Rather. President Bush began an election year summit in Germany today with America's chief economic allies and competitors. Mr. Bush is trying to portray this as a jobs-creating trip at a time when both his re-election campaign and the U.S. economy are in trouble. We have two reports, beginning with White House correspondent Susan Spencer. The images are familiar. George Bush abroad on a first-name basis with heads of state. Today, playing again on that great international stage. Unfortunately for him, the presidential campaign is playing on the domestic stage right now. I just don't think that people believe that George Bush going over and meeting a bunch of other world leaders who also have 35% job approval ratings is going to solve anything in the United States. Wrong, insists the campaign, doggedly dispatching surrogates to convince voters that every minute abroad Thank helps jobs, much. peace, and security here at home. The president is committed to his continuing quest to open up world markets. And although BMW already had announced plans for a new manufacturing plant in South Carolina, the Bush campaign encouraged Governor Carol Campbell to go to Germany personally today to make it official during the summit. This investment will create, with the support uh, investment that will come in in the ripple effect, about 10,000 jobs total. If the president's camp seems slightly manic about all this, it may be because his recent trips abroad have been such PR disasters. The messages remembered, hardly the ones intended. January in Japan, his jobs, jobs, jobs mission was forgotten over dinner. June in Panama, the speech extolling Panamanian democracy disappeared in a cloud of tear gas. And later in Rio, the refusal to sign a key treaty on global warming put Mr. Bush in a sort of skunk at the garden party role. Marketing this summit for voters is especially hard because it's not expected to produce much, either on trade or Yugoslavia. And talking about more aid for the Russians is a political non-starter in a year of angry demands to solve problems here at home. By not providing any positive momentum, it's just a waste of however many days it is, to no great advantage and maybe to some minor detriment. There is no way a president can get out of summits. Bush supporters are just glad this is July and not October. Unless his campaign picks up quite a bit, it is probably the last time before the election that George Bush will need his passport. Susan Spencer, CBS News, the White House. It's the Berlin Air Show, and the high flyer this year is the new Airbus A340. Made by four European countries, it's already knocked McDonnell Douglas out of second place in world aircraft sales. While the St. Louis company is laying off thousands of workers, Airbus aims to fly still higher. How much of the market does Airbus want? Well, as much as we can gain. Hmm? For the nation's meeting at the economic summit here in Munich, the Airbus exemplifies the new spirit of Europe, a new Europe, one determined to compete with the United States not only for business, but above all, for jobs. Europe's feeling more independent. With the Soviet threat no more, its nations no longer worry about losing U.S. military protection. The rest of the world saying, we want to compete with you for the good jobs, and that's going to be the issue in the 1990s and the early 21st century. For all its quaint old world quality, Europe's forming itself into a giant common market. Not only do its governments fund huge industrial projects like the Airbus, if you want to sell in that market, critics say, you almost have to build a plant inside it. 
Europe's aim, they charge, is to create more jobs like these than this plant outside Munich. High-paying, high-tech jobs. The very kind workers in this Idaho semiconductor plant worry about losing. They're trying to protect their jobs that they have there, and they're trying to induce Micron and other companies like us to spend our money, employ the people. They'd like the payroll over there rather than in Idaho. It's very simple. But talk to them in Europe and they say, hey, USA, what's the matter? Can't take a little competition? This is what market is about. Fight for your customers. And if you are lucky, you win. All this is quite a switch because for years, Americans have worried about Japanese competition. But now many economists say a united Europe will be a fierce new competitor, not just for now, but through all the rest of the 1990s. Ray Brady, CBS News, Munich. 9,000 police from all over Germany were brought into Munich for the economic summit, and they had a busy first day. More than 450 left-wing demonstrators were arrested as they tried to disrupt the opening ceremonies. Protest leaders accused the police of brutality. The main topic at the economic summit today was the war in what used to be Yugoslavia. The United States backed a proposal to open a land route for more relief shipments into Bosnia. Serbs and Croats there are battling to carve up the newly independent republic, while Muslims are fighting to preserve it. Right now, the only lifeline is the UN airlift into Sarajevo. Bob Simon is there. It was a quiet day in Sarajevo. Only five bodies went to the morgue. This 200-bed hospital has been getting 90 casualties a day for the last three months, civilians mainly, in a war where women and children are military targets. The Serbian objective is to tear the life out of the city. Medicine and bandages have begun to arrive here over the last few days. The UN has been cutting corridors into town, relying on residents for advice on which streets are less exposed to the guns in the hills. But despite the airlift, people were still scampering for survival today. Every shopping expedition, every search for water, a political act. Just getting through the day defies the Serbian scheme. Dr. Harry Miller, a mathematics professor from Chicago, has been here for the last three months. Now, as you see, the wall here is about two and a half feet thick. You can take a pretty good hit without coming through. And I've got he and his Bosnian wife, Naza, have lived here for 23 years. Their house took several direct hits. The windows were blown out. Several neighbors were killed in the street. They sleep in a makeshift basement bunker. Why don't they leave? We've got a life here. And uh, it's, it's a shame to let it go down the drain. Every day they take a 200 yard walk to the academy where they teach. Classes have been suspended, but they insist on making an appearance. It's what they can do. They hug the buildings, sprint yeah, across the across streets. Here, Harry further. Miller says Sarajevo is still alive because the people who live here are fighting and dying. He has no doubt that both will continue. Hey, I feel like uh, Paul Newman or something here, but these are real bullets. Bob Simon, CBS News, Sarajevo. Still ahead on the CBS Evening News, what may be the best news in a long time for the seriously overweight? and the sometimes tough road for the independent candidate who wins. This is a day I will never forget. Think about your daydreams and what you would do. If you won 10 million out of the blue Oh my God! Miracles can happen, can happen for you Publishers Clearinghouse, the house where dreams come true To survive out here, you need a rifle, a friend like Elvis here, and of course, Domino's Pizza. It's our 99 cent carryout special. With any regular priced pizza, get a one topping medium for 99 cents. Nobody knows like Domino's, right Elvis? How you like pizza at home? I'd like to talk to you about an invisible problem. The invisible bacteria that cause denture odor. Fortunately, antibacterial Effident kills those odor-causing bacteria for clean, fresh dentures. Antibacterial Effident. 
If you're one of millions of Americans obsessed with getting thin and staying thin, there's some good news today, especially after a holiday weekend of chowing down. CBS News health correspondent Edie Magnus has the upside and the downside of prescription diet pills that apparently work. No one is more thrilled by the new weight loss study than Chris Fahey, a television producer who says she's living proof of the conventional wisdom that most diet programs simply don't work. I've tried Optifast, Nutrisystem, even Weight Watchers. What happens is you lose some weight, then you gain more back. It's very depressing, and if I could solve that problem once and for all, it would be fabulous. While no one's promising a once and for all solution yet, researchers have found a revolutionary approach to weight loss they claim enables obese people to take off pounds and keep them off. It involves combining the traditional methods of diet, exercise, and behavior modification with two prescription appetite suppressants. For people who are seriously overweight, uh, the medications used in the context of a total intervention program can be helpful. In Dr. Weintraub's study, published in the journal Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics, patients taking a combination of phentermine and fenfluramine lost an average of 30 pounds and kept the weight off for as long as they took the drugs, which for some was three and a half years. It identifies obesity as a disease, a genetic basis, that needs medication to help all of our efforts at diet, exercise, and behavior modification. Unlike amphetamines, the two prescription medicines are not addictive. But like amphetamines, they can cause irritating side effects, including dry mouth, diarrhea, jitteriness, and rapid heart rate. Weintraub says most of those go away after a couple of weeks. Still, questions remain about long-term consequences of taking these drugs, particularly for young women. We do not know the safety of these drugs for women of childbearing potential. No long-term studies have been done. Phentermine and fenfluramine are currently available by prescription, but they're only approved by the FDA for short-term use, around 12 weeks. The new encouraging findings may just provide the impetus to change that. Edie Magna, CBS News, New York. Stay with us now for more of the CBS Evening News. Next up, it's called Operation Snail, and it's threatening the French economy. Draw from the facts. There's a way to maintain regularity without drugs. It starts here, a high fiber diet, which can include Kellogg's All Bran, an excellent source of wheat bran fiber may help you stay regular, drug-free. And there's a lot to be said for that, naturally. A high-fiber diet and Kellogg's All Brand for drug-free regularity. Listen up, team! You want to keep your sandwiches fresh? Use Ziploc Brand sandwich bags with the Gripper Zipper. Tough, tiny teeth you can feel gripping, so you know freshness is locked in. Let's win one for the Gripper! There's only one Ziploc. Here's a story worth repeating. Bill buys a Honda. Thank you, Henry. Come on, Duke. Bye, Bill. Now, over the years, Bill drives and drives. Hey, look, horses, Duke. And drives his Honda. Then, when it's time, Bill trades his Honda. Well, thanks again, Bill. Thank you, Henry. For another Honda. Honda. Number one in owner loyalty. Again. For painful gas, which would you choose? Your antacid or Gas-X, the tablet made for gas? It's extra strength, 100% cymethicone, to fight gas faster. Faster than your antacid. Fight gas right with Gas-X. The star, the stripper, the street. Think you've seen it all? Wait till you see Tales of Times Square. An all-new 48 Hours Wednesday. A strike by truck drivers in France has paralyzed the country. It's been going on for two weeks now, and today riot police were called in. But as Martha Teichner reports, the rebellious truckers are not giving up. It was an experiment that failed. Riot police using armored vehicles today to tow away the trucks. Striking French truck drivers just drove off down the road and set up new blockades. Drove off, that is, at two miles an hour, calling their new tactic Operation Snail. Eight days into the strike, transportation in France is crippled, and victims of the chaos are getting fed up. In the south of France, farmers dump tons of rotting, undeliverable fruit in front of government buildings today. 
Nous, les maraîchers, on a travaillé... Our whole year's income lost, they complain. In Paris, gas stations are running dry. Key rail lines have been blocked for a second day, leaving thousands of passengers stranded. For tourists, a trip to France has become a disaster of delays, detours, and deprivations. The truckers are protesting strict new driving penalties, six points, and you lose your license. They think their livelihood is being threatened. French television is now covering the strike like the national emergency it's getting to be. It has already shown its potential for turning violent. As the strike hits more and more Frenchmen in the pocketbook, it's not the truckers who are being blamed. It's the French government for appearing helpless to stop it. Martha Teichner, CBS News, London. Iraq is in another confrontation with the United Nations. The Security Council demanded today that Iraq immediately allow UN inspectors to search the Agriculture Ministry in Baghdad for information on chemical weapons. An inspection team headed by a U.S. Army major has been barred from entering the building. Now from around the world, more CBS News. In Moscow, leaders of the Commonwealth of Independent States agreed to create a joint peacekeeping force. Russian President Boris Yeltsin said the force may be sent to Moldova to try to stop ethnic fighting. It was locked down and cleanup today at the maximum security federal prison in Leavenworth, Kansas. About 300 of the nearly 1,700 inmates were involved in clashes last night. One prisoner was stabbed to death, three others injured. In Flagstaff, Arizona, the convict who eluded authorities in the Grand Canyon wilderness for almost two months wasn't so cocky in court today. Danny Horning pleaded not guilty to attempted murder and other charges stemming from his days on the run. And up in orbit, the shuttle crew won't be back on Earth until Wednesday, but today they landed in the record books. They've been up 11 days now, the longest shuttle flight ever. <laughs> Suddenly, vitamins are all over the news. Fact is, two out of three adults don't get all that's recommended in their diets. Two out of three? Wonder if I'm getting the vitamins I should. There is a cereal, though, that has 100% of 10 essential vitamins. Whole grain total. Of course. Just one bowl gives you a full day's allowance of these vitamins. Total. One bowl, 100%. With all the vitamin news, I'm eating total. Of course. Introducing the new Jeep with an all-new four-wheel drive system and exclusive standard driver's side airbag. No other vehicle gives you so much latitude. You could ease up a little. Table for two in about five minutes. Mr. Douglas, I have your table. But you're not gonna. You could stop being a perfectionist. But you're not gonna. You're not gonna change because of heartburn and you don't have to. There's something new that's like no ordinary antacid. New Maalox Heartburn Relief. It stops the burning and helps keep it from coming back. So get on with life like you're gonna live it. New Maalox Heartburn Relief is made for you. For Americans desperate to find a child to adopt, Peru has thousands to choose from. But getting them home is another matter. Watch Ed Bradley Street Stories Thursday. After weeks of wrangling, the Clinton and Cuomo camps have finally decided on a role for Governor Mario Cuomo at next week's Democratic Convention in New York. Cuomo will give the nominating speech for Clinton, and the Clinton camp will let Cuomo say whatever he wants. Independent Ross Perot had no comment today on a Time magazine report. Time said that in order to get his yacht closer to his vacation home in Bermuda, Perot had a construction crew blow up part of a coral reef there in 1986. This was after Bermuda denied Perot a permit to do that. One account says Perot put on a snorkel gear to watch the demolition work. Perot is aiming to be the first president to govern, govern an ind, as an independent. For some insight into how that might work out, correspondent Richard Threlkeld went to Connecticut. You wouldn't call them twins exactly. Ross Perot, the bantamweight billionaire who might be president, and Lowell Weicker, the six foot six inch governor of Connecticut. But they're both political independents and proud of it. The myth that both other parties like to promulgate, i.e. that an independent can't govern, I think got blown right out of the water here in the state of Connecticut. This is one tax we're not going to pay! 
Weicker's tenure has certainly been, well, noisy. He rammed a hugely unpopular state income tax through the legislature. You only love my salary, you idiot! And he defended it with a series of vetoes, something a Republican or Democratic governor might never have dared. He hasn't had that incredible burden that if I propose an income tax, there goes the fate of my party. He's an independent, so he hasn't had to worry about that to the same degree. It was an action that earned the governor this year's John F. Kennedy Profiles and Courage Award, but also antagonized most Connecticut voters, so not again, to mention the state the legislature. Problem. When independents fall out of favor, they don't have a party to help them out. No one knows who they're responsible to. Uh, the bureaucracy is certainly not responsible to the governor. The political uh, makeup of the legislature is not responsible to the governor. And ultimately, the governor is not responsible to any of those people either. And, and uh, it creates gridlock. That weicker has been able to achieve anything at all as governor is due mostly to his decades of political experience. And repeat after me. About Ross Perot, Lowell Weicker's advice is don't vote for him just because he's an independent. I think it's terrific that he's out there as an independent in terms of the concept of providing competition. Whether or not he's the man to run the United States is a totally separate issue, and that's what we now all have to look at. Connecticut is proof that an independent like Ross Perot can run for office and win. But that very independence can be a handicap when it comes to getting things done, a handicap best overcome with all the skills of a good old-fashioned politician. The one thing Ross Perot is proud to insist he is not. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News. Hartford. In baseball, the National League divisions are going to look different next year. The commissioner of baseball ordered some changes today. The Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals will move from the east to the west, and the Atlanta Braves and the Cincinnati Reds will move from the west to the east. The new franchise in Miami will join the National League East, and the new Denver team will play in the west. Of course, it's every ball player's dream to make it to the big leagues. When we come back, we'll take you to some wild places where that dream begins. People loved the old type of granola, but didn't know it was loaded with fat. Introducing new Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. Lots of delicious whole grains, almonds, and raisins, but only half the fat of leading granolas. New Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. Great taste, half the fat. If you want the granola that's low in fat, naturally you'd choose this one, new Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. But if you want the one that was overwhelmingly preferred in taste tests, you'd still pick this one. Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. Better taste, half the fat. Before you freeze, remember this rule of thumb. Get Ziploc brand freezer bags with the gripper zipper. Tough, tiny teeth you can feel gripping so you know freshness is locked in. Freezer burns out. Do like me. Protect your ears. There's only one Ziploc. Over here, Miss Lansbury? Yes, please. Wow, if I lifted that, I'd need extra strength buffering for the aches and pains. <laughs> it's strong, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, strongest dosage of aspirin you can buy. You really believe in buffering? I certainly do. Shouldn't you discover the strength of buffering? Listen, athlete's foot fungus grows beneath the surface of your skin. To cure it, you've got to get down to the root of the problem. You need Mycotin. Mycotin penetrates the surface of your skin with myconazole to cure athlete's foot where it grows. Step up to the mic. Mycotin. Gas pressure means pain and bloating. And the way doctors see it, your best choice for relief is Mylanta gas. It has the best medicine for gas. Finally tonight, we're going to show you something very American that many Americans never see. It's baseball, not the kind they play in the big leagues. This is different. Frank Courier takes us out to the ball game in tonight's Eye on America. Thank you. In small town ballparks, Americans everywhere are rediscovering a ritual of summer. A program! Played as it once was, packaged like it's never been before. 
It's the Bush League's off-Broadway baseball, and it's booming. Attendance last season topped 26 million, the highest in 41 years. It's a wonderful place to be on a nice summer evening. They give you 110%. It's not like going and watching the Cubs. The stands are packed with fans turned off by soaring big league player salaries, turned on by three and a half dollar box seats. You don't have to pay an arm and a leg to go see a baseball game. How about an aisle seat? Would you like an aisle? That'd be good. They'll give you autographs and not charge you $25. Can you sign my too? In the minor leagues, some things are still free. Is being famous worth it? Right now, I don't know that. And uh, the only famous I know is from the little kids. Hits that one hard again. Back on it is Paul. Guy gets a home run, we give him a buck. It's a big thing here. <laughs> Somebody's got to see that. No, I didn't see that. It's like one big happy family. Where the best seats in the house are lawn chairs and beach towels on real grass near home plate. Come on, spread them out. One of the nice things about it is the intimacy of the smaller park. It's as much people watching as it is baseball watching. <laughs> And for the people, what peaks the rally meter most on summer nights is player passion. Head first to the plate and beyond. We want to touch, feel, and taste what baseball is. Jim Paul bought a bankrupt Class AA farm club in El Paso 18 years ago for a dollar and turned the Diablos into a first-rate money-making franchise fun to watch. This isn't nostalgia. This is really the way baseball was meant to be played, and this is really the way people can enjoy the game like they did in the old days. Come on, it's rally time, just a little bit at a time. Let me hear you. For the players, it is here in places like Davenport, Iowa, or Geneva, Illinois, where big league dreams begin and more often end. If I don't make it to the big leagues, I want to know that I gave him my best shot. This beat right the but just like Barney Fife, minor leaguers know the odds are against moving up from a world of hurry-up haircuts, Oops. How you doing? a bag lunch, and a bus ride home. You know, money's not really the, the focus right now. If it was, I probably wouldn't be playing minor league baseball. The revival of America's Bush Leagues revolves around promotion, selling entertainment more than baseball, and the package includes everything from rock and roll and quarter hot dogs to dancing girls on the dugout. This is rock and roll here. This is uh, lock them and load them. We're going to have some fun tonight. And one sure way to load the bleachers when your home team's in a slump, invite the dynamite lady. Three. How many times have you blown yourself up Too now? Too many times. When you take away the, the dancing girls and, and the popcorn and the hot dogs and stuff like that. No, I don't like that. Maybe minor league baseball is calling out to all of America, come back to the roots. <laughs> In the Bush Leagues, winning isn't everything. It's more about dreams and memories, families rediscovering those timeless bygone summer nights at the old ballpark. That's the ball game, the Diablos. Go at it again tomorrow night. Don't forget, dollar night. In El Paso, Frank Courier for Eye on America. And that's our news. I'm Connie Chung for Dan Rather. I'll see you again tomorrow morning on CBS This Morning and again right here tomorrow night. Thank you for joining us and for all of us at CBS News. Good night. Experience CBS News. Next on the TV8 News, live at 6, a new push to bring doctors to rural Iowa. Sarah Jarvis reports from Ringgold County. And a well-known Des Moines firm faces a large fine for alleged pollution. I'm Steve Oswald. I'll have a live report next. And Dana Carden with the sounds of a winning performance. Connie with thunderstorms in the forecast, and Heidi says the Cubs and the Cards are heading west. TV8 News is next. Think about your daily dreams and what you would do <laughs> if you want a million. I'll be
our special 25th anniversary, $25 million sweepstakes. It's a one-time only celebration, and it's in the mail now. Dave Thomas introduces the $1.99 kids meal. I like it when parents bring their kids to Wendy's. So we're giving moms and dads a break by lowering the price to just $1.99 every day on our kids meal. It's still got a Wendy's hamburger with a Junior Frosty or soft drink and fries. And I didn't forget the fun toy. Yeah! I was a kid once too. Now get free koala yummies and Wendy's kids meals, including the $1.99 hamburger kids meal. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Thank you for watching KCCI, TV8 in Des Moines. And now from TV8, Iowa's news leader, Paul Rhodes, Kevin Koenig, Connie McBurney with weather, and Heidi Soliday Sports. This is TV8 News, live at 6. Good evening, thanks for being with us. I'm Sue Mason, in for Kevin. We begin with a new effort to solve the health care shortage in rural Iowa. A total of 50 Iowa counties are now the targets of a plan to raise the Medicare and Medicaid feeds that are being paid to doctors. That's in order to keep physicians from leaving small Iowa towns. TV8 Sarah Jarvis with details and reaction from Ringgold County. Any problems? Dr. Patel is one of only four physicians in Ringgold County, and he's the only surgeon. He's practiced family medicine for seven years here in Mount Air and knows the need for more medical help. You practically don't have your uh, personal life. You have to, you know, uh, build, it's, everything is built in around your work. Ringgold is one of 50 Iowa counties targeted for more health care. The elderly population is growing in these areas. Doctors and hospitals in the designated counties shown here in yellow will receive higher Medicaid and Medicare reimbursements from the federal government. The counties will also get help in attracting physicians, other health care providers, and clinics. Governor Branstead says bringing health care providers to rural Iowa will also be a step toward economic development keeping the money spent on health care at home. Rural Iowans we talked with say their health care is a concern. A lot of the small towns around here just don't have the doctors. What ones are there, it's quite expensive. The administrator of Ringgold County Hospital says he understands the need to keep health care close to home. Rural people, and especially elderly, are not inclined to want to have to drive 90 miles to Des Moines uh, or to another center for services if they can have them provided at home. And these are the prescriptions. Meantime, and Dr. Patel says there have to be changes in health care to attract more medical help back to rural areas. In Mount Air, Sarah Jarvis, TV8 News. The higher Medicaid and Medicare reimbursements are not automatic for these counties. The state health department will hold seminars for the target counties in September to tell them how they can sign up. The Des Moines Bridgestone Firestone plant could be facing a big fine and other criminal charges following allegations of pollution dumping. tv 8 Steve Oswald, who first covered the story when the pollution allegedly occurred, joins us live from the scene with an update. Steve? Well, Sue, we're here on Waffley Creek, just south of the Bridgestone Firestone plant in Des Moines. The state is alleging that back in January of 1990, the firm intentionally pumped petroleum products and industrial pollution into this creek, which ultimately runs into the Des Moines River. We were there back on that cold winter morning in January of 1990 as Firestone dug down to a pressurized sewer line leak. The line connected Firestone's Second Avenue plant with the city sewer. Now, the state isn't as upset about the leak as it is about how Firestone allegedly handled it. The state claims that the firm intentionally pumped sewage from the break into the creek instead of into a tanker truck for disposal at the city's wastewater treatment plant. Now today, after working its way through the state's environmental process, the case led Attorney General Bonnie Campbell to file criminal charges against Firestone. The charges filed in Polk County District Court are punishable by up to a $25,000 fine, one year in prison, or both. It isn't appropriate to just dump uh, sewage into a storm sewer that feeds into a river. People live downstream. Uh, it's illegal, and we want to send that message that even though, uh, yes, this is a difficulty that they were dealing with, they didn't handle it appropriately. 
And Waffley Creek has changed a lot since the January break. In an unrelated matter, the creek has been graded and partially reseeded to improve it. Uh, this case is expected to go to Polk County Court. Uh, Bridgestone Firestone is expected to make an initial appearance, and that's expected to happen sometime in the next couple of days. Sue? All right, Steve, what was Firestone's response today? We had a chance to call them and ask them about that. They said that they were contacted by telephone by the state attorney general's office today, telling them that this criminal charge had been filed, but they haven't seen a written copy of it. And until they do, they say they'd rather withhold comments. Sue? All right, thanks a lot. Steve Oswald reporting live. A federal judge says a casino riverboat must stay in Iowa at least until Friday. The Emerald Lady is one of two casino boats that were ready to leave Iowa today for the state of Mississippi. But the city of Fort Madison took the owners of the Emerald Lady to court, trying to force the boat's owners to honor a seven-year contract on docking fees. That would amount to nearly $400,000. Late today, a federal judge ordered the Emerald Lady to stay in Iowa until Friday. At that time, it could leave if it posts a $35,000 bond while the legal arguments continue. No such delays for the other boat that is leaving Iowa. The Diamond Lady cruised the Mississippi off Bettendorf for the last time last night, then packed up today to head off for its new home in Mississippi. The Diamond Lady was a new boat when she went on her first gambling trip in Iowa just 15 months ago. A third day of searching with no luck tonight in the apparent drowning of an Oskaloosa teenager. The unidentified 17-year-old fell off a raft in the Des Moines River just below the Red Rock Dam Saturday. Divers have searched the waters in that area since the accident and have not found the body. The search today will continue until sunset. Ames police are looking for a suspect in a shooting yesterday. 18-year-old Jocelyn Ely found in her bed with a gunshot wound. Ely survived and is in good condition. Police are waiting to interview the victim before releasing more information. A fatal drunk driving case leads to a prison sentence for a Sheraton man, 33-year-old William Hoover, receiving 10 years in prison for a fatal accident last January on Highway 6569 in Warren County. Hoover was intoxicated as he drove the wrong way down the highway. His truck hit a vehicle driven by 36-year-old Lester Daniel. Daniel was killed. Hoover's two children were injured. Today, Hoover was sentenced for vehicular homicide and two counts of child endangerment. Several people had called police about Hoover's driving the night of the accident, but Des Moines police were unable to stop him before the accident. A 57-year-old Altoona man today pleaded not guilty to sex abuse charges involving children. Arthur Downs is charged with indecent contact with a child and second-degree sex abuse. Those in connection with incidents involving children at an Altoona mobile home park. Downs allegedly enticed the young people into his home by offering candy. He's free on bond pending trial in September. Rains across the Midwest sent grain future prices dropping today, as better harvest totals are now expected. Even so, last week's rain here in Iowa, just under an inch on the average statewide, was not enough to keep some crops from deteriorating. Corn now rated good to excellent in less than half the state, 49 percent, and the rest is fair to poor. Similar story for soybeans, half the crop good to excellent, half fair to poor. Well, if your farm field or lawn needs rain, Connie says you could be in luck now. Some real changes ahead after kind of a chilly fourth. The summer is waiting in the wings with some uh, very impressive temperatures. Iowa will be on the warm and humid side of the jet stream for the next several days, leaving us wide open to some steamy conditions and much warmer temperatures. That'll set the stage for more rain beginning as early as tonight. More weather later in the news. All right, and next on the TV8 News, the effort to put a new face on the teaching profession. Michelle Parker with details. And we'll see the winning performance of a local chorus when we come back. Hi, my name's Mike Spurl. I used to have cancer. A few years ago, I was on TV for...